Good morning, happy Sunday to you. Taking a live look at Empower Field where the Broncos are hoping to take home a W today. Good morning, I'm Lawrence Cavidi. Let's check in with weather impact meteorologist Chris Spears. And Chris, the people who are going to be watching the game today really are in for a treat. Uh, you know what? I, fantastic football weather today, Lauren. The temperatures will be cooler than yesterday. We had a weak front pass through, and so we'll be about 5 to 10 degrees cooler today compared to yesterday. So that is some good news, especially if you'll be out at the game. Uh, it's going to be a warm week ahead, though. Those temperatures rebound. The wind picks up. Uh, so more of the same. Dry weather expected. But that bottom bar there, showers, question mark. That question mark, uh, there for good reason. And we're still trying to figure out the exact details of the weekend forecast, but it certainly looks like it will turn cooler uh, by the upcoming weekend. We are in the 40s and 50s this morning up and down the I-25 corridor. Still warm for this time of the year. We should be in the upper 30s right now. It is in the 30s in Estes Park. Red Feather Lakes, Dillon, Granby, and Kremling this morning. We're going to look at the wind speeds out there. Very light, many places calm through the day today. We'll start off with some sunshine, but by the afternoon, a few clouds pop up and maybe something we really haven't seen for quite some time, possibly a shower or two somewhere in those central mountains. So eastern Colorado, you feel the cold front 70s today instead of 80s like yesterday. Western half of the state, not so much. You're kind of repeating what you had on Saturday with temperatures in the 70s and low 80s. Lauren, four or five more days. We may have that cool down coming. We'll talk about it in the main forecast coming up. The countdown is on. Thank you so much, Chris. Right now, Aurora police are investigating a shooting that left one person dead. Police say they were called to Kingston Street near Spencer Garrett Park for reports of a man found in the street with a gunshot wound. He was taken to the hospital with serious injuries where he later died. Right now, police say it's not clear if the shooting happened on Kingston Street or somewhere else. They don't have any information on the shooter. For the first time, we're hearing from one of the 12 people who spent hours a thousand feet underground when an elevator malfunctioned at a mine. The malfunction happened Thursday as the elevator was heading down into the Molly Kathleen gold mine. That's in Cripple Creek. At around 500 feet, the person operating the elevator from the surface felt something strange and stopped it. The elevator still worked, so the operator brought it back up within 20 minutes and found 46-year-old Patrick Weir dead, along with a broken door. It's still not clear exactly how he died. 11 other people were on that elevator. Four were hurt, but none of them seriously. A dozen people from a second group were trapped below ground for roughly six hours where engineers made sure that the elevator was still safe to use. Rhonda Pulse, a tourist from Missouri, was among them. We got hungry, kind of cold, but it was uncomfortable, but we were never panicked or afraid at least no one ever visibly said, are, are we ever getting out of here? Can we get out of here? That kind of thing. The group had access to water and used radios to communicate with first responders. They were eventually hoisted up into groups of four. They weren't told about the tour guide's death until after they were rescued. A number of local, state, and federal officials are looking into the accident. The Styles Beyond Stereotypes fashion show kicked off this weekend in Greeley. Nine News reporter Rhea Jaw explains their mission to use fashion to change the way people view disabilities. These models have been strutting their stuff down this runway. The music is going. Everyone here is having a great time. Organizers told me they've spent nine months planning for this event, and the fashion designer also told me he had more than 20 custom-made pieces for the models, so we spoke with him as well as some of the models as they were getting ready. No pre-show jitters here. You ready for this? I am. I'm not nervous. You're not nervous? No. Nope. Ryan Akers is one of dozens of models walking the runway for the Styles Beyond Stereotypes fashion show. You're going to rock it tonight. I am. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. I just wanted to try it out, something different. All the looks are sourced from materials from the ARC thrift store. But we kind of decided to do this to like shine a light on some of the kids and shine a light on really like their disabilities, but also what they can do with their disability. Ryland Alms is the designer behind the looks. It was definitely a challenge. Like that's one thing with the clothes is like some kids, they're very sensitive to textures or certain things like that. So we do have a model. He is 34. His name is Ryan Akers. And so what we, we kind of had a hard time for him. We had him actually at 
about four fittings, I believe. But helping them feel um, confident made it worth it. But then when we got him at the full final fitting, when we got him in the full outfit, it was he was probably more lit up than any of the other kids. So it was pretty special to see. And now that confidence is shining through. Is there anything that doesn't feel good about this? Right there when you're done. Like it. Feels pretty good. Breaking stereotypes with each step on the runway. Pursue your passion and not and let nothing hold back. And that's because nothing holds me back. All the proceeds from this event will go to the Ark of Northeast Colorado. They're an advocacy organization based right here in Weld County. They are working for the rights of individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Reporting in Greeley, Rhea Cha, 9 News. Today marks day four of cleanup after Hurricane Milton ripped through Florida. More than a million people still do not have power after the storm rocked the state Wednesday as a Category 3 hurricane. Florida plans to give away more free fuel in the coming days. Getting fuel has been a struggle for some people there. In world news, early this morning, four Lebanese Red Red Cross Red Cross volunteers were injured by a double Israeli airstrike on a house. The volunteers were sent to the scene after an initial strike on the building. The Red Cross said the volunteers were treated in a Lebanese hospital and are in good condition. The Israeli military said Sunday it captured a Hezbollah fighter. It happened while storming on one of the group's tunnels and hideouts in southern Lebanon. Video shared by the IDF shows a man climbing a ladder and leaving a tunnel shaft. He can be seen holding his hands up as he surrenders to the Israeli soldiers. The IDF said after surrendering, the Hezbollah fighter was interrogated, arrested, and transferred to a detention center for further investigation. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will hold a cabinet meeting today as the country's leaders weigh their response to Iran's October 1st missile attack. A quarter of Lebanese territory is under evacuation orders amid Israeli airstrikes and a ground incursion. The country's prime minister made another push for a ceasefire on Saturday. Dozens of countries are condemning reports of attacks by Israeli forces on United Nations peacekeepers. Israel has intensified its military operations in Gaza, issuing evacuation orders and blocking food supplies to the impoverished area.